This is Richard Fowler. I'm John Kilpatrick with Oklahoma Keto, Louisville, Kentucky, USA. And we've been forever doing working on this leading, and I want to show you a type of practice that really helps immensely. The step-by-step -step practice. And what we're doing basically is being bullfighters. And this is what uh, O-Sensei was doing there. I know of two other martial arts that are really, these principles are fundamental to them. And, uh, and Aikido is, O-Sensei is Aikido. This was fundamental to what he was doing. And so there are certain, to be a bullfighter, certain things have to happen. The bullfighter has his cape. And what he's going to do is substitute the cape for him. So the bull charges him, and he gets his cape up there and lets the bull attack the cape while he gets out of the way. And that's what we're going to do. And this has all kind. If you learn how to do this and you start sparring with it and all, you'll find out that this increases your chances of survival probably by orders of magnitude. It just makes a tremendous difference. So here's what's got to happen. I don't carry a cape. I mean, I should, you know, maybe if I was a Superman or something, you know. But I don't carry a cape, a cape or weapons or anything. So I'm going to substitute my hands for my body and let him attack my hand while my body gets out of the way. So for that to happen, I have to get his attention on my hands. And we're doing that, what we found works really well for that. I've got to get the hands moving. And so we clap the hands. Now, we have to control the center line. And the center line is the line that attaches him to me. I get my hands on this center line. Now what I'm going to do is keep him on this center line and then when I step out of the way, the center line's going to follow me, but he's going to follow this hand. So I've got him on, a, on an artificial center line and the real center line is over here. So this is what we're doing. So the first thing is, I have to get his attention on my hands. So I'm doing this. Now, this, the clap, the hands come together, gets his attention in front of me. And then I have to keep my hand on this center line going to his face. Uh, so then the next thing that I've got to do is get my body out of the way. In Aikido, we do that by pivoting out of the way. So as he goes back and he comes in and attacks, and I pivot out of the way. This hand has to follow this line. A mistake that's really easy to make, that's easy to get into, is that when he attacks, I keep my I bring my hand with me. Well, he's he's attacking the hand, the line that the hand is on. So now I've brought his attack line into the new center line. I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get stabbed here. So this is really important. You have to really pay attention to keeping this hand on this old center line. You can't bring it with you. This is very important. Now, sometimes when, when a person really attacks you, generally speaking, they come in close enough that you end up hitting them in the face. But that's not necessary. I'm not, I'm not trying to intimidate him. I just want this hand to keep his attention and I want to intimidate him a little. I want him to be watching this hand and make sure it's not going to get him. But I'm not really trying to get a startle reflex. So our first move is to get his attention on the hands. I pivot out of the way. My feet are together. See how I move. Now I step in and strike with this hand. If I was able to hit him with this, that's a real plus. If I didn't, then this one's going to hit him. When I do this, I have to be behind him. 
if, I, if my arm hits his arm here, it's going to keep me from getting a very good stride. Most people, if you hit that arm, they push you, they fight you, so they push down on you. Now, not only do you not get a good strike, but you can't throw him backwards because he's pushing forwards. Then after that, I'm going to hit him in the back of the head. Um, if you do this correctly, and I don't want to get into that right now, but if you do this correctly, it's extremely dangerous to practice. And I know you see um, YouTube channels talk about this and say, oh, it's nonsense. Uh, trust me, we found out the hard way it's not nonsense. You can seriously injure your partner with this. The only the way we practice it is in a slow motion practice. When we're practicing at full speed, we don't do this. And so you hit here, then you come in, and we're going to step through for something like a Remy Noggin. I don't need to throw here. You know what it is. But so this is our movement. Now, when we're practicing this, you, you, what you want to get, when he attacks here, he attacks, and then, I say, then he tells me, did he see my hand or was he seeing me? Whether he stabs me or not, it doesn't matter. If he saw me instead of just looking at my hand, then I didn't do it right, and we have to figure out what I did wrong. And it's going to be one of three things. Either I started moving my body first, so he locked in on my body and didn't ever lock in on my hands. I, I stepped or something like this rather than pivoting. And, or I didn't keep my hand on the center line. I brought the hand with me. You know, those are the three mistakes that you typically make. This step-by-step -step procedure tends to get your movements in the right sequence. So I have to control this center line. And that's what you want to learn at first. Now, as a matter of practicality, um, we don't do standard attacks. We try to get our partner. Not when we're doing these katas like this, but when we start doing freestyle and stuff, we're trying to get our partner. So when he attacks, and, and I step over here, he's going to cut me. He cuts back into me, he guts me. Well, you know, that's not desirable. Now, hopefully, if you hit him here, then hopefully that did a good enough job that he won't be able to do that. But a lot of times when people get hit or something, they flail and they might accidentally cut you open. And also, when we're actually, you know, this practice step by step is not realistic. I mean, it's... It's what you have to do to get the sequences right. But when you really do this, you do it as a pendulum step. It's one movement. It's not three movements. So he attacks. You know, it happens like this. It happens fast. It's one movement. And so uh, when, when he attacks, I always have to protect myself from the weapon. I can't let a weapon that's flailing around get me. And we do that by putting this other arm between us and the weapon. So if I go, let's uh, turn around. So if I go to the other side, I can do this, and you have to practice this going both ways. But if I go to the other side, I come over here, well, this hand is underneath this arm. And I have to get far back here far enough and hit him hard enough that he can't keep coming at me. And then I might have to, if, he's, if he cuts into me, I grab this arm. If he doesn't, then I hit him here and do something like a Remy Nagy again. So these are the basic things that you have to you know, that you're going to be getting to. But in the beginning, if you, when you, you have to be able to practice this and you have to be able to practice it slowly. You can practice it fast. You know, you can work up speed and then, you know, of course you have to practice dynamically. You have to practice with several people attacking you. You have to get as real as you can get. But you've got to have it where your partner sees your hand. He doesn't see you. If your partner sees you, 
then you don't know how to do this yet. And if, uh, if your partner stabs you or slices you, you certainly don't know how to do it yet. 